Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing fine. Uh, so the other day what happened is I went to this um, lovely Indian restaurant at Paddington. I think it's called the Paddington Curry House or something like that. And <clears throat> the lady actually came, uh, the waitress came and spoke to me and then she said, you know, oh, you need to try this lovely biryani. So, uh, you know, as far as she knows, it's in their restaurant that they have the best biryani. She's like, and I'm waiting to see other restaurants that actually top our biryani. So ever since I heard this, I was like, oh, I haven't had biryani in a long time. But then, you know, the effort we go through in order to make biryani. So I've been very lazy about it. But today I feel like having biryani, this lamb and everything, rice, etc, etc, that's needed for it. So I thought, okay, might as well do a very simple shortcut biryani. So it's not the traditional way of making it because obviously I'll be doing it the shortcut way as I'm looking for something very easy and simple. So if you want my actual biryani biryani recipe, there's a recipe for baked biryani and the normal biryani that I've done a long time ago. So just use the search bar uh, on my Facebook groups in order to find the recipe for those. But today is going to be a very shortcut biryani so don't come and saying that oh this is just you know not like the authentic biryani because definitely it's going to be a shortcut simple easy method that will have the flavors of biryani and incorporate um, you know the taste just the method will be a much more simplified uh, version so that's what I'm going to do today uh, at home so it's just home cooking so nothing professional or fancy so stay tuned watch and enjoy and also uh, subscribe to my youtube channel for more lovely videos and recipes and to all of you who have been following me and subscribing to my channel sharing the post everything thank you so much for your support so uh, apart from that take care enjoy bye here i've got about 350 grams of lamb so this is the boneless lamb pieces you can get it at any halal butcher if you just say you want the curry lamb they sell curry lamb, curry chicken, uh, curry goat. So they all come uh, like this, you know, cut into pieces. So you can get the bone, um, boneless piece or the piece with bones in them. We have taken a little deep bottom pan and I'm going to wait for the water to boil. So I've added in about two cups of water. I'm actually going to boil eggs in them. So you need enough water in order to submerge the eggs completely um, in it. One of the main ingredients for biryani is that nice, crispy caramelized onion but the key is also not to overdo it so here i've got about three onions gonna peel it wash it and cut it up into thin slices and there we are the onions are nicely sliced the water is boiling so i'm gonna add in three eggs into that in goes three eggs so i'm not making a huge quantity today and that's the reason why um, i'm using such few ingredients and not only that i'm taking the shortcut method of making the biryani rather than going through the whole lengthy process of the authentic way of doing it the next step is to take the onions and fry it up and caramelize it nicely eggs are going to be boiled for 10 minutes because we want it nice and hard boiled here in a pan i'm going to add in a little bit of ghee and a little bit of coconut oil you can add in just ghee because you know normally people use ghee for biryani but I like to mix it up. It's a little bit of coconut oil and a little bit of ghee. Let it melt nicely. You can put off the onions into the pan. Instantly get that lovely aroma of the ghee, the coconut oil mixed in with the onions. I'm gonna season it with a little bit of salt. And in order to get it caramelized, we need to add in a little bit of sugar, half to one teaspoon. That will give it a nice caramelized look and caramelized taste as well. Some people even add in uh, plain flour with the onions in order to get it very crispy. But I'm not going to do that today. It's slowly taking shape, looking nice and lovely. So it's almost 10 minutes, so time to take the eggs off the heat. Once the eggs have been taken off the heat, we are going to add cold water onto it. You can even add in some ice, so this will stop the cooking process. And once that's done, we can peel it up and then cut it into half or however you like it to be cut. So the eggs are nicely peeled up and cut up. So I cut it up into three instead of two. Like I didn't cut it into half, I just cut it into three. At this stage when I'm thinking about how to make the rice, I'm thinking should I do a coconut rice biryani recipe? But because I already said that I'm going to make it nice and simple, I'm not going to do all those dandifications. Just going to keep it nice and simple. But maybe later on I might do a coconut rice biryani that might end up being much more flavorsome and tasty. Onions are also nicely caramelized and ready. I've set the onions aside. Next I'm going to make the masala for the meat. That's also not going to be too fancy. I've taken my little blender. I'm going to squeeze in the juice of half a lemon. 
I'm going to add in one heaped tablespoon of yogurt, one tablespoon ginger garlic paste, one heaped tablespoon tomato paste, and half tablespoon of red chili paste. Then I added in two green chilies and four to five curry leaves. Season it with salt and pepper, half teaspoon turmeric, half teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon garam masala, half teaspoon ground cumin, half teaspoon cinnamon powder, one tablespoon thick mint sauce, or you can add fresh mint leaves into that, half teaspoon cardamom powder, and three cloves. Last but not least, to make it nice and rich, I'm going to add in one tablespoon of almond meal powder. And now it's ready to be blended up together. And there it is everyone, nicely done, taste divine. So if you want, you can add in half an onion as well into it and blend it up. But I'm just keeping it simple, I'm not adding it for this recipe. It's looking nice and lovely, it's so flavorsome, smells good, tastes good. Don't forget to taste it, just to make sure that um, you added in sufficient amount of salt and that it tastes overall good. Always you need to taste and make sure of that each step you go along the way. And now let's get to the lovely lamb meat. Just gonna heat the same pan in which I fried the onions in. Added in a little bit of ghee just to flavor the meat. Now I'm gonna add the meat into that, make sure it's nicely washed and clean. And then we can sear this on all sides until it's nice and brown. You can see that the meat's got a nice lovely red color to it. So if you buy lamb from the Australian supermarkets and things like that, you know, many people have complained to me over the years that the lamb fat stings, it smells. But if you go and buy it from a halal butcher, and this is in Australia I'm talking about, you won't have such problems. The meat will be so lovely tender. And best of all, the fat doesn't stink as bad. Once it's nicely seared, I'm going to add in about one teaspoon of cashmere chili powder. That will give it a nice red color. It's not spicy. Cashmere chili powder is just purely for the color, the nice red color. I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt, not a lot because we already added salt in our masala. Give it a good mix. And there we are, everyone, it's looking nice and lovely. And into this, we can add in our masala mix. Just adding this into the meat. And goes the masala. Mix it well until it's nicely combined. This dish is going to be cooked in the rice cooker. So there are different ways of um, making biryani. You can make it the normal way in a pot or you can bake it. Some people make it in the Indian earthen clay pot, which is a chutney. So today I'm going to make it in the rice cooker. So just mix it around for about 5 minutes until the raw smell goes away. That will give the spices a chance to nicely roast and fry up. After 5 minutes, I'm going to transfer this into the rice cooker. So if you're using very tough lamb meat, then you need to add a little bit of water in this pan and cook it for a while before adding it into the rice cooker. If your meat is nice and tender and cooks easily, you can add it in along with the rice. Because the amount of water I'll be adding in the rice cooker will only be equal to the measurement of the rice. So I'm not counting the meat. And that's why I'm saying to make sure that the meat is at least half cooked before you put it into the rice cooker along with the rice. That way the meat and the rice will be ready at the same time. Actually while looking here, I noticed that my lamb meat is a tough meat as well. It's not tender or the fast cooking types. So I will have to add in water and boil this as well. Now, you have two choices. You can add water into this and then boil it that way. Or you can put it into a pressure cooker for easy cooking. After one whistle, take it out. The only thing you have to watch out for is no matter how much water you put, you need to evaporate the water completely before you put it into the rice cooker along with the rice so that the water measurements of the rice doesn't get messed up. I'm going to start off by putting half a cup of water and then I'm going to put it on medium heat, cover it up and nicely boil this. If the water evaporates before it's nicely cooked and tender, add some more water. So keep doing it until this lamb meat is nicely cooked and the water is completely evaporated. You can either go half cooked and then put it in along with the rice once the water evaporates or you can nicely fully cook it and put it along with the rice. That will make it very tender, extra tender. So it depends on what sort of a texture you want for your meat. That's how much and for how long you'll be cooking it for at the same time keep in mind that some meats like beef and things like that tend to go much more chewy if you keep it and cook it for longer periods of time but lamb tends to become nice and tender so i'm going with that um, information in this case i'm going to make sure that it's just cooked so i don't want it completely raw and then i'll transfer it into the rice cooker once this water evaporates so i'm going to place a lid on top and cover it and cook it until the water evaporates. I'll cover it for about 15 minutes, open the lid 
make sure the water evaporates completely and then put it off into the cooker always improvising in the kitchen so i realized i don't have a lid that fits this particular pan because it's a new pan just place an aluminium foil on top and a heavy plate on top now 15 minutes are up i'm gonna just open it so just check it once in a while in between to make sure it's all good there's still water there i'm gonna let this nicely evaporate so just leaving it open so it looks half cooked now much better than it was before so just wait for the water to evaporate and then we'll start putting this into the rice cooker as i mentioned before water is evaporated we don't want it completely dry or fry let it be sticking in this creamy texture itself see semi dry that's what i should call it semi dry so once it's in the semi dry state we can transfer it into the rice cooker you can see here i actually transfer the meat into the rice cooker and put it back so literally my brain is on vacation today it's not you know yeah let's start over so as we all know the famous biryani comes in layers so unless you want to put the meat at the bottom see you can do it that way too you can put the meat at the bottom put the rice on top and just complete the look but i personally prefer biryani in its um you know layer format where you got the rice first then you got one layer of the meat then you got the other layer of the rice blah 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 so that's what i prefer and yes maybe i shouldn't have said blah 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 too but you know like i said my brain is on vacation today for biryani as you all know the only brand i stick to is india gate this is the india gate exotic basmati rice long grain in terms of the measurement for the rice it's one cup of rice equals two cups of water unless you're using some chubby you know very hard to boil grain of rice but normally for medium to a uh, small to long you know thin grain rice that cooks easily for one cup of rice you will need two cups of water that's the normal measurement so it depends on the rice grains as well so here for this india gate exotic rice one cup of rice equals two cups of water I'm going to wash this up some people for biryani actually prefer washing the rice soaking it in water for about an hour or so i'm not going to bother with all that today just going to wash it and cook it up like i said you know if i follow the authentic steps and ways and long procedures of making biryani i'll have to like literally camp over here in the kitchen overnight or something like that's how long it takes you know six hours five hours well i'm exaggerating but you get the point this is meant to be a shortcut biryani so that's why i'm skipping all those long steps even in terms of the meat they say you know if you marinate it in the masala longer it, it's much better it's going to be tender yes of course it's true if you do the biryani the authentic way of making it it's going to end up maybe you know tastier well i cannot comment it depends on the way you make it but this is meant to be a shortcut video and shortcut it stays here's the one cup of rice i'm going to take half of this and that's going to be our first layer which is going to be at the bottom another andrea moment when i spread it out you know the half cup and half cup it's leaving a lot of gaps and when i'm looking at the meat i think we'll need more than one cup of rice so going to take two cups of rice with four cups of water change of plans change of quantity this is what happens when you're not a professional chef and you're working at home or you're cooking at home if that makes sense so two cups of rice for this quantity of lamb which was about 350 grams with two cups of i mean four cups of water one cup of rice two cups of water two cups of rice four cups of water so now you get an idea of the measurement if you prefer a little bit of rice and lot of meat and you know you don't want that balance then you can go for one cup of rice it doesn't matter it's all up to your personal preference how much rice you want how much meat you want i like it to have a balance so this you know when you use your common sense and look at it definitely it doesn't look sufficient enough for that much meat because you'll end up having very little rice and the meat will be very overpowering so you want it to balance out so i'm going to add in one cup of rice into this and then two cups of water and then we'll add in the meat layer and then add in the second cup of rice on top of that with two cups of water so that will make it you know nice and balanced one cup of rice and two cups of water in this at the moment and then we'll be adding in the meat layer then we'll add in another cup of nicely washed rice with another two cups of water because one cup of rice equals two cups of water so that's going to be our final layer on top next step after we added this one cup of rice and two cups of water is we are going to add in this meat layer so depending on how many layers you want i'm just going to add in one meat layer so i'm going to add the whole thing in hope it wasn't too confusing because if i add in four cups of water right on top once i added in all the layers the bottom uh, layer 
will not get sufficient amount of water and might end up being dry. This is where everything is balanced, you know. Everything is correct for each layer. There we are. So the meat layer goes in there. And once that's done, we can add half of the onion. So here's a caramelized onion that we fried before. So just half the quantity of that in here. Just, you know, spread it out. And I've left the rest for the final layer of rice and this is how it looks like at the moment. So lovely, isn't it? And here's our final layer of rice. So you can add in uh, bay leaves as well, you know, in the blender along with the masala. I forgot to add that in. But um, yeah, about one or two small bay leaves. So we'll add in this. So don't worry if you can't see the layers forming yet. Once it's done and the water evaporates, it'll look nice and lovely now it's time to cook everything together um just gonna put half of this in there as well not the whole thing because the rest we leave some for the final touches depending on how this turns out so just left this much in there that's for the final touches another thing you would notice is in the normal authentic biryani they actually put milk with saffron etc etc but you can already see that this gravy is nice and red especially added the cashmere chili powder and everything so it's going to already have that nice yellowy color keep in mind this is not the authentic way of making biryani it's a shortcut method but it has most of the spices that gives it that taste um, of you know biryani also the look to a certain extent, obviously, you know, when you move away from an original dish and you do something else with it, you can't expect it to be uh, its, um, you know, complete identical. But it's the closest you can get for a very quick biryani if you feel like having something close to it at home. At the same time, you don't want to take that, you know, massive, massive effort to go through all those procedures to make that authentic biryani place it off into the rice cooker turning it on and once it's ready let's come and have a look at it also let me just take this lid off because i added in the kashmiri red chili powder the biryani will have um the color that's a bit more reddish than usual because normally biryani is like um you know a yellowish color of the saffron in terms of color as well this biryani would be a little bit different if you don't like the reddish color you know that's purely just based on appearance just keep the cashmere chili powder you don't need it anyway for a nice um, change you know just trying it this way add it in the chili powder let's see how it turns off so i'm not leaving it open for too long let it cook nicely I just picked up my son from school and reached home as soon as i open the door of the house you know you get this nice warm welcoming smell of the biryani it's like you enter any indian house you know you get that smell you're like oh Anyway, so let's open it. You can see that the masalas have come on top as well, giving it a good mix around. Next, I'm going to chop up some fresh coriander. I also placed off the caramelized onions, as you can see here on top. Uh, so this is the uh, one that we left out, you know, while it was cooking. Place that caramelized onion on top, so the rice, everything is nicely flavored, and it smells so good. Water is completely evaporated. You can clearly see the nice long grains of rice. Garnished it with a tiny bit of fresh coriander. And finally, the last step is to add on the eggs. I'm just going to cover it up and once more place this rice cooker on warm so that everything will warm up nicely. The flavors of the coriander will infuse. Along with this, the eggs will blend in and combine nicely you know all the flavors so just for that last combining of everything together I'm going to cover it up not going to heat it or anything just put it on the rice cooker on the warm setting once more on the warm setting you can even press the cook button so i'll just press it to show you so just press the cook button as well and once it automatically stops you can but i don't think it needs any further cooking the only thing it'll do is just if there's any excess water left by any chance it will um you know evaporate that and then um yeah it'll go back to the offset warm setting so that's what's going to happen but yeah you can, it's your personal preference whether you want to just keep it on warm and let it be there until it's time to serve or you want to actually cook it a little bit so that everything combines together went ahead and placed it on the cook setting now so we might as well just leave it there until it uh, turns off by itself and goes back to warm then it'll be ready one last thing I would like to mention before I forget is that this biryani's color is a little bit more intense because I added in the red cashmere chili powder. So if you want it to be that light yellowish color, you like the rice to be more on the lighter side, 
then just you know skip the cashmere chili powder it's just optional depending on how intense you want the color to be so this will be more towards the reddish side reddish yellowy or like a you know as you have seen you know how intense the color is otherwise you'll get a very light yellowish color if you skip the cashmere chili powder so that's also up to your personal preference how you want the dish to look in two to three minutes it's gone back to the warm setting so it didn't do much so it doesn't make any difference leaving it on cook or whether you leave it on warm because after two to three minutes it just comes back on warm anyway so no harm done so it's up to your personal preference whether you want to cook it for a little bit or just put it straight away on warm setting and there we are here's a lovely biryani it's got that smell of coriander infused in it now so when you uh, take off the lid you get that uh, difference in the smell which indians mouth doesn't water when we hear the name biryani we're always looking for the you know next best biryani the one that beats the taste of the one we just had etc etc the next step is to have a sneak peek at what's going on inside in between the layers as you know i use the boneless lamb pieces you can use the one with the bone just move this egg out of the way so we can have a sneak peek so you can see the rice is nicely perfectly cooked now we are looking for the lamb layer nice and steamy oh my god all the biryani lovers will be looking at this but definitely not the authentic way of making biryani as you all know let me try and get a hold of the lamb piece so look at it it's nicely cooked nicely done this is one side and this is the other side there we are see it's nicely cooked inside and it's very tender see it just falls apart it's nice and tasty so that's it everyone so you got the biryani made with half the time that it requires when you do it the authentic way but it looks the same and it tastes the same but I shouldn't say it looks the same because it does look intense in color. It works for me, tastes good. All I wanted is a very simple biryani and here it is. Some yogurt, raita and pickle and papadam. Perfect combination. Nothing much else to say about it. It speaks for itself. And also I feel this video won't be complete if I don't plate this lovely biryani up for you guys and show it, you know. So I'm going to record that as well. Look at it, so good. You can see all the flavors are nicely intact. No water left, nothing. Perfect. Oops, I read the egg. Crushed an egg. But see, all through the layers, the masala has nicely, you know, combined. Place an egg on top. All right, everyone, so just going to give it one final taste. Mm, it's super. One last thing before any of you criticize, because I know people are very picky when it comes to biryani. And some Indians, they actually, you know, want it the authentic way. So before you comment something negative, just do try the dish first. You know, make it this way and see, you know, if you don't get the same taste or flavor, obviously it won't be exactly the same but if you don't get the exact biryani feeling then let me know but definitely that's not going to be the case if you follow uh you know how i made this dish and once you try this way you can feel free to give me your comments and uh let me know you know what can be changed because obviously it's a shortcut method and it's not the whole drastic method you know the authentic way of doing it so definitely it's not going to um you know be up the mark sometimes but Definitely, I can say this is very flavorsome for a shortcut biryani making method. Very tasty. The masalas, everything is infused nicely in it. The spices, so it all depends on the quantity you add. But definitely, you know, try it and I'm sure you'll love it. And apart from that, here it is, everyone. A very lovely biryani made using the shortcut method is ready. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more lovely videos and recipes. Take care. Enjoy. Bye.